going to shoot. Maybe make sure the audio, all the audio is. Okay, do it. All right, thanks. Okay. All right, I think I think we're probably live, but I'm going to wait till I see it here because otherwise I have to repeat myself, and you know I never like to repeat myself, do I? I'm alive. Rhode Island, so far away. <laughs> Amazing. What's happening? I don't see it yet. I'm holding this here because I'm just checking my email. No, I'm waiting to see if it goes, goes live. Wow, that's a delay. There, oh, it's happening. It's happening. I see a commercial. <laughs> oh, it'll play after the ad, so I have to wait for the, but since the commercial's here, I think I'm probably live. Oh, there we go. We're good. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> Thanks, Seth. Thanks, Gavin, for showing up. So, uh, <laughs> once again, through the magic of the being that is Seth Miranda, we are live uh, here. So, you know, here at Adorama, or not here at Adorama, I'm not Adorama, uh, you know, we're trying to keep everything going. We want you guys to keep creating and, and keep shooting. And if we're going to have you guys do that, then, hey, we need to be doing it too. So, uh, <laughs> I decided to set up in my house, so we'll see how this goes. It's gonna, you know, the switching might be a little rough, so forgive me there, but uh, we're gonna shoot some product photography. Shoot some stuff that, you know, that you have around your house, have some fun with it. I pulled a few things. Um, I, I ordered, because, you know, just in case you don't know these exist, um, tiny paper. <laughs> I was telling Fernando, I'm like, Fernando, I got my tiny paper. These are 26 inches, I believe. Put two together. You know, uh, from Savage, you can get pretty much all the colors in this small size. And with these, uh, you know, you can basically set up anywhere like I have here on my table. So uh, we're just going to go with white today. Look at that. I got two more colors. So we get at least two more shoots out of this. And uh, sorry if I'm coming in. <laughs> this is literally my ceiling light lighting me. Now you can, you're going to appreciate uh, how nicely everything's lit normally in, in the uh, vent space in Adorama in the future. Okay, so. We're gonna go through this and we're gonna shoot a couple of different product things. And if you guys have questions, I'll keep jumping back and forth, but I do see that some of the Adorama crew is in the chat too, so they'll probably be able to be faster than me. Let me just quickly check to make sure there's nothing pressing here. Ba -ba 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 -ba. <laughs> and he's here, thank you, Patty. Uh, all right, so here we go. I'm gonna go like that. Ba -dum -ba -dum, multi cam. All right, so I've got my my white sweep of paper here, and we're gonna use flash because obviously I need to have lights on so you guys can see me. So we're gonna use flash. So it might not, you know, you see the chandelier. That's not gonna affect our shot. Maybe we'll decide to use it. Who knows? Um, but the first thing I'm gonna photograph is this guy, my lovely subject, Bob. So Bob is, you know, kind of a grumpy guy. You can kind of tell. He doesn't like getting his picture taken. A lot of times, you know, you'll encounter this as photographers. People will come to you and the very first thing they say and they're just like, oh, I hate having my picture taken. Well, okay, good. That's a good way to start, right? But that's, that's what they usually do. Bob is that guy, right? He's not going to give us a smile. We're not going to try to get a smile from Bob. He is basically grumpy and that's what we're going to do. We're going to create a grumpy light for him. Now, uh, normally Bob hangs on the wall. And you could, if you were selling Bob, let's say you could put him flat on the, on the table and shoot down him, but I want to do this more like a portrait. Um, so I'm actually going to, now, if you do a lot of portrait photography, uh, portrait, if you do a lot of product photography, you might have some, uh, like plexiglass stands that you can buy. I don't know if the top of my head's cut off, hopefully not. Um, I don't have those plexiglass stands because I'm not in a studio and I don't do a lot of product photography. So I'm using this jar of pasta sauce, which was delicious by the way. Um, so it's, it's glass. So basically what's going to end up happening is I'm just going to sit, sit him on here so that he's up off the paper so I can control my light better. Um, having him up off the paper is going to give me more room to put things in and out and put the light where I want it. Um, I'm shooting something that's clear because then, you know, I mean with white it's not really a big deal, but you'll be able to see what's through him and it'll be easy enough to, to remove and post if I want to do that. Uh, let's see if he actually stays. Stay, Bob. Nice. All right, Bob's chilling. Let's see. Okay. Now, he's just hanging out here. He's like, Daniel, I was having fun hanging out on the wall, and here you brought me in here. He's being grumpy already. We're not going to worry about that. I'm in Capture One. What we're going to do is we're going to, uh, first, we're going to set this up so that none of the light in the space affects our shot, like we always do, right? doesn't matter if you're in Adorama or you're in the studio. I say this every time when I'm in Adorama. Wherever you are, it's going to vary, right, what the settings need to be. 
but I'm going to start with my good old tried and true uh, 160th, 1 160th of a second F8 ISO 100. And what I want to do is I'm going to look through the camera. You know, it's mirrorless. This is a Z6. Probably don't see me anymore. Um, and, you know, it looks pretty black to me. But the way we're going to know for sure is we're going to take a photo. I'm going to try to anyways. It is particularly dark here. Come on, Bob, you can do it. Okay, we're going to make a photo. And we're going to jump over here to capture one. And we're going to see that we have a black frame. So, looks pretty dark to me. I'm going to come over here, though, just to ensure this. Grab my exposure slide. Look at that histogram. That's the way you want your histograms to look. <laughs> Not usually. Um, I'm going to grab our exposure slider. I'm going to drag it over to see how dark we are. Uh, we're not really seeing detail on Bob right away in, at, at two stops, but we are seeing a little one in the background. I think that's probably fine. I am using speed lights or small flash, so I don't want to get too crazy with my, uh, my aperture, because if I do, then I'm going to be just taxing the heck out of these flashes. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to keep my exposure kind of... Uh, Kind of where it's at around F8. That should give me enough power to get the room, you know, marginally dark, I guess, and uh, not have to worry about it too much. So I'm going to try to do this so I can be picture in picture for you guys. There we go. Um, and then I'll do this for when we're not. Nope, that didn't work. We will go like that. Someday I'll figure this out. There we go. Now you can see me. All right. So let's light him up, right? So what, what do we know about Bob, right? Besides the fact that he's grumpy. We can see by looking at him, you guys can see me, right? Yeah, you can see him. Um, the shape of his head, he's, he's, he's kind of got, you know, a, a very, very recessed eyes, right? His eyes are very, very recessed and kind of, you know, his, his forehead comes out a bit. He's kind of sad or grumpy, so he's leaning forward. So we know that if we, wherever we put light, you know, is going to throw a shadow, right? In its opposite direction. So if, let's say I take my flash. I'm just gonna turn the modeling light on to start. If I take my modeling light and I kind of start moving my, my light around, we can see how the light affects Bob, right? You can see how it is on his face. If we shine it in like this or different angles, we're going to create shadow. And that's really what we want to do in a portrait to create mood. We want to create mood and shadow. So let's do it. Oh, that wasn't high turn enough. Okay. Let's see. I'm still live, it looks like. Oh, oh, oh. Anything pressing? Nope. This is a very old iPad and it does not like that I just flipped it sideways. There we go. Come on, there we are. Plastics, yeah, I know, there are plastics in the studio, exactly. Uh, hey, from Canada, Manchester. All right. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so let's do this. So, I mean, when you're making a portrait, you know, whether you're photographing is the top of my head cut off? I'll stand a little closer. Uh, <laughs> I think you need this to see the top of my head. Uh, whenever you're making a portrait, you know, you generally, you know, the, the first thing to do is maybe work with soft light. Soft light's generally, uh, you know, what portrait photographers use. Soft light meaning our transition to shadow is going to be more gradual, especially on somebody like Bob, who's got a lot of kind of deep recessed area. The soft light's probably going to help us, right? So I'm going to use a soft box. Soft's right in the name, right? But how do we know it's soft? So hardness and softness is based on the size of the light source to your subject. This is a Shamira extra, extra small, you know, which is like, I don't know, 18 inches or 16 inches. Somebody can Google that. And Bob is about half that. So this is actually a pretty large light source. This is going to give us soft light on Bob. So let's do this. I am inevitably going to knock this coffee over, so I'm going to move it. All right, here we go. So what we're gonna do is, I've got my Profoto A1, which is a you know, small flash, you just saw it. I'm gonna add to it this little uh, dome diffuser. That's gonna help spread the light out. That's very important, especially in a small box. You wanna get the light really spread out inside of it. And let's start with kind of a simple, you might call this like, like, a, like a side light or, you know, 45. Well, it will be once I turn Bob the right direction, right? He's gonna face the camera. 
All right, so I'm gonna bring the light in kind of from the side. We're gonna have some light coming across. I gotta put the light in the box, of course. So what I'm gonna do here, make sure you can still see me, yeah, you can, okay, is I'm going to attach my flash in here. Goes in just like that, nice and simple. And this is in my A group. I have multiple groups here, A, B, and C. So A is generally gonna be my key light or my main light. So I'm going to actually turn off the other two groups for now. And I'm gonna use what's called uh, TTL or through the lens metering. So basically what TTL is gonna do for me is it's going to give me the exposure that it thinks is correct. And you know, we, we wanna give the light a chance, you know, to, to give its opinion here. If we don't agree with it, we'll have a conversation about that. But for now, let's just see what we get. Okay, there he is, right? There's Bob. He's looking pretty good. That exposure looks decent. Hey, Bob. He's sharp, right? Oh, yeah. Looking good, Bob. Now, what's my white balance set on here? Let me check my white balance. Because it looks, he looks right, but the background looks a little cool, but I have a feeling that's just my eye. 5600, that seems about right, actually. I am, I am using flash, though, so let's switch to flash. Ah, oh, that might be a little nicer. There we go. That seems about right. Bob's looking good. I cut off the side of his head instead of the top of it, like, you know, I normally talk to cop. I'm gonna back up a tiny bit. Bob wants to look as good as possible. You know, he's one of these guys that likes a long lens, so I'm gonna zoom all the way out to 70. We'll leave a little space around him. Come up a little bit. And yeah, let's, let's take another shot and just make sure this still looks good. The adjusted white balance. Yeah, there you go, done. Well, that was easy. See that? All you need is modern technology and you're good to go. All right, no, he looks good, right? So Bob's very flat in the back, you know, but in, in the front, he's got some, got some shape and form. And just because I'm, I don't have a lot of room to move stuff around and, the, and, and we're photographing a product, remember that moving your subject is like moving your light, right? So if I want to experiment without moving my light around, I can actually like turn Bob towards the light a little bit, see what that looks like. You know, he looks good there, right? That's a pretty good shot of Bob. If we want to move him away. This is why as a photographer, it's always good to charge by the number of frames that you take. Because right now I'm getting a triple charge here on Bob. Let's look at that. And you know, depending on how we show him, you know, light really defines a face, right? It tells a story here. He's looking into the light. It's showing all the detail. This is the cleanest of it, of them maybe, right? This is kind of standard issue. And here we've got a little bit more kind of flavor or shape, right? Like look at how nice that is. By the way, that's broad lighting if you want to know. We can also turn Bob. No, I'm gonna put him back towards the camera because I want him to face me. But now I want to use the light like that, right? I like the light kind of, kind of coming from the angle. So now I, now I can move my light. So I'll just put it over here. Now, if you, it, some flashes like this one have what's called a modeling light. So if you have that ability, you can turn that on. That does help you aim it. But in such a bright space as we are here, I'm not gonna be able to see it very much. I'm also gonna raise it a tiny bit. Okay. Let's see what that looks like. I'm going to my classic kind of putting the light slightly behind Bob. There we go. Now we've got that kind of moodiness. A little bit of light coming around his eye there. Kind of come in here a little bit. And again, we're just going to tweak it. Whenever you first get a subject in front of you, you know, spend a couple minutes looking at them and figuring out what works best for them. Now, I'm not too worried about what the background looks like because I'm going to like the background separately. That's my plan anyways. But if you thought this, if you like this light pattern, but you thought it was a little too dark on that side, you could, let's say, fill it in with a reflector. I know I have a reflector somewhere. So this is a Brooklyn reflector. Now we have the shape that we wanted, right? I'm looking at that camera, even though I'm talking this one. Uh, the shape that we wanted, but we've got the the more filled in shadows, right? So that's pretty nice. All of that kind of works. 
Okay, let's just quickly take a quick check here. Any questions, thoughts, concerns people have? Switch to the Capture One feed when you're looking at the shot. I am, oh. Sorry guys, I thought I was on the Capture One feed. Let me do that all again. All right, let me go back since you guys can see it. Okay. Uh, all right, so. This is the first shot we made. Sorry about that, guys. So we can see when we turn Bob towards the light, away from the light. So let's take, these are the three I was talking about, right? This is kind of your standard issue, 45. This is looking into the light, basically nice flat. This is maybe more flattering in a sense. And then this one's got a little mood and flavor to it. So I was liking that last one. So I wanted to get a similar feel. So I just turned him towards me and moved my light source. That's where we are here. So I am now going to go like this. Nope, that did not work. There it is. That's what I thought I had done all along. Sorry about that. Okay, better. So that's texting me. Yep, gotcha. Okay, it's big now, right? This should all look good. I can't, I'm a little delayed, so yeah, okay, good. <laughs> yep, and I did, I put myself in the picture in picture. I'm so little. Uh, okay, sorry about that. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, so, all right, here we go. So I literally, <laughs> it's probably hard to see, and I'm not gonna screw it up because I have it now, but I've got the feed, the switcher, the computer, so got a lot going on. I apologize for, for that, but uh, anyways, this is where we're at. Uh, I kind of moved the light around to get it where I wanted, um, and as noted, the edge of the softbox is giving us a bit of a shadow over there, um, but I added a little fill card there, so that's with, that's with your reflector. So reflector fill, you know, comes in on Bob. Now you got Bob and Phil. It's like a team. And uh, yeah, we're good to go. Well, let's light the background now. So I'm gonna move this for a second, just so you guys can see better, because I think we're probably a little tight here. Oh, I was looking for that earlier. Yeah. All right, good. Let's go like this. Well, let me screw this up now. I'm gonna go like that, and I'm gonna go like that. There it is, back on me, okay. So already thinking I was gonna end up doing this, I got myself a little prepared. I have basically a Justin clamp here. I've used these before, kind of on the side. I'm gonna use these as my back light stands and we're gonna use a couple of extra lights. Got some more A1s over here. And we're gonna throw a little light in the background. All right, so we'll just put this one here. So, you know, these, what's gonna end up happening with this is clearly it's gonna come around and, and hit Bob but I actually, it might be okay. So I'm gonna kind of start here. We're gonna play around with this a little bit, I think. So we'll put one on each side. These are gonna be in my B and my C group. I'm not setting the power yet because I'm probably just gonna use TTL here as well, at least to get it going. So again, this is B and that's C. Yeah, let's try that. Okay. So I'm hoping to get away with this May not work, but we're gonna find out. I'm gonna turn A off. And I'm gonna put B on and C on. Now I'm shooting against a white background with the lights behind him. So when I shoot this, I'm almost certainly going to get uh, like a grayed out background, not a white background because remember your meter is trying to produce gray. So we know that. So now I'm just gonna switch it into manual and I'm gonna give myself a couple of stops. Then I'm gonna shoot it again. There we go. Oh, look at that, I'm getting that like really crispy white and I'm getting this kind of moody light on him coming from the back. Now, if you don't like that, right? Yeah, it's not bad. It's not 100% even, but around him it is, so that's what's important. If we don't like that, we'll deal with that in a second, but let's leave that there now. That's our rim light, right? Let's come in. We're making Bob into like a, 
a cool athlete. Let's put the light, by the way, this is the uh, articulating arm trick here from Seth. He gets paid five cents every single time I do this in the video. So it's five cents for Seth right there. He's making his money. All right, so I'm just gonna spin this guy up. This one's from, uh, this is a Noga arm. So there's lots of good ones. You wanna just make sure that you, like I said in the video about these before, make sure that you get the best one you can afford um, because you are supporting, well, an expensive flash. Although, as it turns out, the A1s have gone down in price. So that's kind of cool. Okay, so we're, we're, I'm gonna turn B and C off, go back to A, go back to TTL, and I'm gonna get a, an exposure on Bob now again, a front, a front exposure. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I'll switch back to manual. So what I'm doing here, guys, I'll explain this in a second. Let me just do a quick shot. Yeah, there we go. So what I'm doing here, so I do this a lot and I feel like people ask this question after the fact, like they walk up to me after the presentation's over. I'm assuming you can see me here. Um, and they're like, I don't understand what you did there. So with the way the Profoto flashes work and other flashes now too, is that when you switch them from TTL, which is through the lens metering, where it's, where it's picking its exposure, right, to manual, it locks that in. But if the flash is not on, it won't be affected by anything you do. So if you have two different groups that you want to set like that, what you can do is turn off the flash that you don't want set, get everything set, locked in manual, then flip back to TTL with only the other flash on. So basically you're turning your flashes on and off so they don't move while you're doing your TTL exposures. Then as long as you leave it in manual, everything will, leave, will stay locked in. So that's why I do it that way. And you can see that we're able to get a nice background, nice white background, right? We have that little bit of like, Nice white background, get that little bit of like kind of rim light coming around and he's nice and lit in the front. Again, if you didn't like the light coming through the front and hitting him, I kind of like it. I think it works for his shape. You could add, um, I got some over here. I'll disappear for a second. No matter how much you prepare for a photo shoot, the thing that you need is always off camera. So you're always having to walk off camera to get it. I mean, you guys are on camera when you're doing this, right? That's how most people do these things, right? This is, this is the new reality, right? Okay, so here I am. I'm back. Uh, let's see. I'm going to switch here so you guys can see me. Okay, so this is a, like a bounce card, basically. Profoto uh, makes these for their flashes. Essentially, what we're going to do with this is we're going to use it like a flag or like a gobo or a barn door or any of those things that you might want to call it, right? Basically, I'm putting it on the side here. I think you can probably see that. Yeah. Oops. Don't worry, I didn't kick the light. Can that be seen? Yeah, you can see what I just did there, right? I'll pick this one up and show you closer to the camera. So what we're going to do is this guy here, right? It's basically designed to be used as a bounce card, like you might put on top of your, your, your flash if you were like doing an event or something, right? But I'm gonna put it on the side of the flash and it's essentially going to ask, act as a flag. So that should help us to get the light off of uh, Bob. There we go. So you see the difference, right? You've got, he, stay, he stays the same. I mean, in, in fact, his exposure dumped, went down a tiny bit. Um, oops, not showing it again. His exposure went down a kind of tiny bit uh, when I did that because some of that light coming forward was bouncing all around the set, right? So if I liked his exposure exactly where it was, I might have to up my front light a tiny bit. And that's what I will do. There we go. So we can see now that you've got three versions of Bob again. There's lots of three versions of Bob's. He actually requires me to have three versions of him every single time I do this. Okay, let's see what's happening. Where's Robbie? <laughs> uh, okay. Let's see. <laughs> Your name is Bob. Look at that. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, okay, good. 
I'm, I'm sorry, I'm behind on the feed. Let me just go down and make sure that there's nothing. Yep, see this sets arms. The A1 is super cheap now. Yes, I said that. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Well, you know, the thing with TTL is that... Um, uh, so, hold on. Why not use the black side toward the flash so it doesn't kick more light under the background? Uh, because I want more light on the background. So that's a good question, though. You could, you could, in theory, do that. So the question is, you know, why not do it like this? I'm assuming you can. I don't think I, I've never tried it. You know? Oh, yeah, there you go. Uh, you know, the reason that I don't do it like this is because I want that light kicking on the background. I'm not, I'm not doing it to keep light off the background. I'm doing it to keep light off of Bob. So I actually want more light on the background. And this is only helping. So that's the reason why. But that would work. I mean, that's definitely a way to do it. There's no reason that, that uh, you couldn't do that um, with these cards. And there you go, something new. I, ne I never thought to do that, but it works. For those of you who may have those and want to try it. Cool. All right. We're killing it. Whew. All right, good. That was a good question. Uh, okay, good. And I'm all caught up, except something in a language I don't understand. I'm sorry. If you type in a language I don't understand, I cannot answer you. Uh, All right, here we go. So that's nice and clean, but let's say we want to do something more moody with Bob, right? Remember early on, I, uh, when I just held the light up, I showed you all the different things we can do with them. So we can actually take our light, and depending on where we place it, it's going to affect the shadow on his face, right? Right now it's kind of nice and clean in the center. We can actually put it, let's put it like really close to him and over top. Spin my articulating arm around. It's so stiff. You want them to be firm, but man, sometimes they're hard to. All right, so I'm gonna go like that. It's kind of in front of him. Remember that when light comes out of a softbox, it doesn't come straight out, right? So there's still light hitting his face. You see that? All right, here we go. Let's see what that looks like. All right, that basically has changed the angle of it. I'm gonna kill the backlights for a second so we can see it better. Let's see what that does. Oh yeah, that's kind of neat. And you see what's happening here is we're getting a little bit more shadow under his eyes, but because this light source is so soft, right? It's gonna be hard to really get it uh, moody with this because what's gonna happen is, oh, you know what it is? We need, hmm. See, normally I would just say something to Seth and he would get it for me, but now I have to find it. I need something that's, remember the background's white or the, the ground is white. We're gonna put this book here. Let's see what that does. Although this is kind of a glossy book, so that might actually not do what I want it to do. Oh yeah, it did a little bit. I need something black. Black, 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 black. You would think I'd have more black things around, but I do not. Yeah, hold on, this is black. So this is basically, this is not negative fill. Had this discussion a lot. What this is, is it's, it's stopping the white fill from bouncing up into his face. That's not what negative fill does. This is basically just adding contrast by putting, uh, by stopping the, the natural fill that's happening off the white. I have a black shirt on, but I feel like putting, oh, here we go, this is black. I knew I'd have something black eventually. So as we do this, there we go, I add a little bit more. So we're gonna add just a little bit more each time and that gives us a little bit more shape and flavor to his face. You see that? So, you know, because we want that, right? You have somebody with recessed eyes, you don't necessarily always want to fill them in. Sometimes you want to, uh, to have them go dark. And also, by the way, you don't have to blast the light in the background and make the background white. We could, you know, make it, we could light it still, but make it a little bit darker. So I'm going to drop that two stops, let's say, and see what that looks like. I am, I am a little close to it. Yeah, this way we've got a cleaner background, right? Because we're actually lighting it, but it's a little bit darker. In fact, I'll drop it another stop. And again, I'm just using the controller on top of the camera. Right now, I am currently in manual, not in TTL anymore. And I'm just kind of 
phasing that background down a bit until it gets to where I want it to be. Go one more stop. And there we go, right? Now we've got this kind of moodier, uh, grayer background off the white, and we're still lighting it, so it's even. It's not like in the beginning when it wasn't lit. Thanks, Andy. Uh, make the background blue. All right, I don't know if I should give away Seth's secret here. Seth is the only photographer in the whole world that's ever done this. But I'm gonna do it, I'm, I'm doing it, Seth. This is not gonna be super clean because the light's hit in the background, but I could either gel the, the, the lights on the back to make them blue, or I could use white balance to do it, right? I can take this, um, this Profoto full orange uh, gel, or filter, whatever they call them, we'll call it a filter. If I hold it to the light, you can probably see it. I'm not sure if you can see it or not. All right, so this is gonna basically make our front light orange. Let's see what happens when we do that. I'm surprised I haven't knocked this whole thing over yet. I'm a notorious light uh, dropper, so. All right, here we go. Okay, so I've added, now I've added a gel to the front light, which is gonna eat light and all kinds of other goodness. So I'm gonna actually go back and turn B and C off, right? So I'm turning off the two backlights again and I'm gonna go back to TTL and I'm gonna make the shot with the gel. Okay, now he's golden. He's, look, it's just like golden hour, right? So if I do this, then I come here, instead of putting it on flash, I put it on incandescent. He comes back to normal. Now the background is this kind of like, oh, interesting. It's like this like almost greenish, uh, warmy white. But we're gonna now hit the background with clean light from the flash, which is going to come, come across as being more blue. This is not gonna be super blue because again, some of the light from the front's hitting it, but it, you'll get the idea. Let's turn these back on. I'm gonna take it out of TTL. Right? Now I've got blue light back there. So the light's blue. I'm gonna give it a little bit more juice. I wanna make it a lighter blue. So if I wanna make my blue lighter, then what I'm gonna do is kinda of slightly overexpose it a bit, right? So if I give myself another stop of light back there, my blue will become a little bit more kind of a baby blue. You know, and Bob likes his baby blue. I think now what's interesting is color is, is an interesting thing, right? Now we've changed the color and even though the exposure on Bob has stayed the same, he looks dark. It's just the nature of it. So I'm gonna come in to A and I'm gonna give him like half a stop of light. There we go. Now Bob's there. He's looking pretty good. He's like, I'm Bob. And then the background is now blue. And that's it, easy as that. It's always required on every one of these live streams to make the background blue at least once. If you guys are not the master of that, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> blue rims. Well, I could do that too. So if you want to add extra stuff to it, a little extra flavor, a little flavor flav, you can go over here, remove these. Now it's important to note that once you've used a piece of equipment, I've used these, right? I can charge for them. Even if in the end we don't use them for the shot, I use them so I can charge for them. They're on the bill already. So keep that in mind. Oh, you know what we should do? Hold on, let's try this. I'm gonna try to make it a little more dramatic by spinning this, this oh, I have wide angle adapter on this. I'm gonna spin this this way. Yeah, let's try that. All right, I'm actually, because I'm turning it towards him now, I'm actually gonna drop the power like We'll say two stops, just to get myself in an area. I'm like checking my, my notifications to make sure that's not like, you're off the air, what's going on? <laughs> All right. Thanks for bearing with us guys here. Uh, this is actually kind of nice because it gives me something to do on a Thursday night now that uh, Cheers is no longer on the air. Oh yeah. There's like punchier blue rims. 
And we got a bit of a vignette feel going, which I like. I'm all about the vignette feel. If I had a grid, I could probably keep the light off the background altogether, but I don't think I'll be able to do it with this softbox the way it is. But let's see. Let us see if we can do this. Uh, not bad. So see, by keeping the softbox off of him more, you're really starting to pick up those highlights. It's actually creating a much, much more of a story. You know, there's something going on here. Like what's, what's going on with Bob? Why is he so upset? You know, it's like, why is he grumpy? You know, you're so quick to say, oh, Bob's a grumpy guy, but maybe there's a reason why Bob's grumpy, you know? It's not all, you know, tea and crumpets for Bob. Okay. There you go. Just trying to get you guys to see some insight into people's, you know, the, the Bob's personality. He's a nice guy. He's been hanging on my wall for like 10 years. Finally decided to come down. Okay. I think that's pretty good. Let's take a quick look to make sure there's no questions. That's pretty nice. And again, if you didn't like the color, we could just switch back. Chocolate gel. <laughs> I don't have chocolate gel with me. Uh, let's see. Yeah, he's got, yeah, exactly. Definition of the cheekbones. Uh, still looking good. Cheers is still on Hulu. <laughs> yeah, but it's not on Must See Thursday, right? Wasn't that what it was? Now I'm aging myself. He's grumpy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Bob did not get a stimulus check. I can tell you that right now. I'm staying here with him and he is not happy about that. All right, so. That's Bob. I think that's basically where I want to bring Bob to. I don't see anything else I really want to add. You know, at some point, you got to stop lighting. But let's just do this, even though I just said that. Let us remove our uh, black from the front. Again, it's not negative fill, it's just block, because now what we're doing is we're adding fill. By the way, this is a weird book. I don't know if you can see it or not. It is a bizarre comic, so. Maybe I'll do a video about that. All right, this is, this is basically adding fill. Ah, see, not as nice. See, I actually think that it's nicer without the fill, right? It just feels more natural without the fill. Because when we walk around, we don't usually have fill around us. So, fill's kind of annoying anyway, so I try to not have them around. Cheers on Netflix. <laughs> Must see Thursday, that's it, right? All right, so, <laughs> and there you go. Okay, I think we're doing good with time. I should have brought somebody else on. I, I have Uncle Leo, but we've already shot Uncle Leo a bunch of times. All right, so let's do one more thing with Bob. Uh, sometimes if somebody has like really strong uh, features, it's nice to use like a hard light on them. So let's bust out and use a hard light on Bob. In fact, because I'm that kind of guy, oh, hold on, I'm looking at the wrong camera. That's not right. There we go, cut that part. Because I'm this kind of guy, let's do a mixed lighting scenario, right? Let's light him with uh, my data light, which I, I happen to have right here, um, and use a nice hard light on him, and then we'll use the flash for, for background. Okay, so let's do that. That's my plan, I'm sticking to it. There's nobody here to tell me no, so. This is a data light DLED 7 which means it's the seventh LED light that Dato Light created. No, it's seven watts or something. It, I actually don't know. See, I shouldn't say anything when I don't know. But anyways, it's, it's a, the DLED 7. Um, it's fairly powerful and it's small. This one happens to be dual color. So uh, keeping with our trend, I will put it in tungsten. So I can shift my mode to tungsten, which is uh, 3200. There we go. All right, so let's see what Bob looks like. Hey, Bob, let's get some hard light on you. Do, 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 do. Oh, yeah. You're a beauty, Bob. You're a beauty. So I'm kind of feathering it off a bit because I want to keep some of it off the background. Clearly, we're going to get some on the background. I'm also going to kill some of this light here um, because 
we're gonna have to drag the shutter to get this exposure. You can also focus it down a bit. Let's do that. That looks pretty nice, I think. We're getting an idea. One cool thing about working with the constant light sources is you can really get a feel for how it's going. If I wanted to come over here a bit. Yeah, that looks pretty good. You're looking good, Bob. You're looking good. I am gonna go dark for a second, guys. So, get ready for that. I need to have, uh, kill that light. So I want to, when you do, when you're gonna use constant lights, you want to kill as much of the light in the space as you can, because otherwise it's going to affect your shot, right? So there's Bob, he looks good. I am going to look through the camera and adjust. I'm gonna leave my aperture where it is so that it doesn't affect my flash. And I'm gonna adjust my shutter speed. There we go. So according to the meter in the camera, this is correctly exposed. We'll see what actually happens. I'm gonna turn the flash off for a second. Okay. Oh yeah, that looks pretty good, right? And even though I'm using a tungsten balance light, he looks correct because I have the camera set to tungsten balance. So that's pretty good, right? Uh, hmm. I have a barn door somewhere. I'm gonna bust the barn door in a second. Uh, all right, this looks pretty good. Let's add the flash. I'm gonna turn A off because I don't need it anymore. And we'll leave the rest of where they are because remember they're set for F8. Oh yeah, look at that. Now the background's got a nice blue tone. Yeah, I don't like how that light's hit in the background. So I'm gonna find my barn door, which is over here somewhere. As I'm walking around in the dark, I will continue to talk randomly. So I'm basically just getting a barn door out, guys, so that we can keep as much as possible. I wanna keep the light off the background. Part of it is angle too, but if I can get it off the background as much as possible, that's going to work for me. So I'm going to slightly move it this way, bring the barn door in. That should help a bit. Let's see. It's still hitting a little bit, but let's just see what it looks like. Oh yeah, we're getting there. That's pretty good. That hard light is really coming across. I'm going to let a little more in the front. <clears throat> You can see how the hard light is really showcasing the shape of his face and then that light coming from the back. So it's all hard light, right? We get hard light coming from the back and we have hard light coming from the front. So let's take a look at this, our current situation versus here, you know, with the flash, right? It's kind of the difference, right? This one is, is cool, right? It looks good and we, you know, we're like, oh, that really showcased the shape of his face. But when you compare it to the hard light, which might still be a smidge dark. So I'm gonna actually just gonna drag my shutter a smidge more. So I'm at a 25th of a second. I'm gonna go to, let's go to a 15th. We'll shoot that. Yeah, that's nice. Not quite a Rembrandt light, but it's getting there. Uh, we have this deep, deep blue background, right? We've got uh, him, you know, looking correct, if not a little bit cool, um, but I actually like the way he looks. I'll go a little darker on him. I'm gonna, a little brighter, rather. I'm going to go a tenth of a second. Yeah, there we go. Cool. Yeah, that looks good. There you go, Bob. Bob with hard light, right? Uh, I am getting a little light on the top of his head that I might not, isn't, isn't my favorite thing that's happening right now. So I'm actually gonna use the barn door to bring that down a smidge. That should do it. There we go. Of course, when you use the barn door, it's blocking the light, so it is actually affecting uh, all of the light. So I'm gonna bring it down there, and then I'm gonna give myself a little bit more light. Sixth of a second now. There we go. So now I got the, the you know, he doesn't have so much of that brightness going on top of his head. He looks good there. If you are shooting product and stuff like this, guys, the best way to do it at this point, now that we have it set, is I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna actually fire it from Capture One. That way I'm not taking any chance of me pressing the button on the camera and shaking it. So that's probably your best bet there. And there we go. And if we didn't want the background to be blue, right, because I have a dual colored light, I don't think it'll look as good, but we, let, let's just quickly do that until I show you. If I come over here and I change my light 
to 5600. Nope, that's the power, not the... By the way, there's also a lot more light power in this thing. I could have uh, turned the power up on the light. All right, I'm going to go to 5600, which is basically, well, I'll go to 6000. I think it's, I think that it sets the flash at like 5900. We'll go 5900. So let's go to 5900 here. Let's take a shot. Right, it's going to look blue. And then I'm going to come across here. And I'm going to go, again, I'm going to capture one. I'm just going to switch this to, uh, to flash. And now I've got a gray background, right? So depending on the mood that you want to portray, you've got two different versions of Bob, right? You've got neutral Bob and you've got blue Bob. Cool. <laughs> you can't see me at all. I'm like hiding in here in the dark. All right, so I'm going to turn some lights on while I look at the, the thingy here. Uh, twist the jar. Pop and blur. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, yeah, I don't see any reason to do a pop and blur here. Uh, but, uh, you know, you certainly could. You could move the, the head, I guess, in the frame. All right, I'm going to turn the lights back on here. Let's see if there's... Okay, uh... Keep thinking I can back up video, but it's all live. Yeah, it is live. Uh, okay, let's see. Do some pop and blur right now. Uh, recreate Seth's shot. Oh, with the lady at the long blonde. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Cooking with gas. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, Bob's pretty awesome. So you can definitely... Um, I mean, I'm not very, I don't think it's appropriate for this, but just because people are saying it, we'll do a pop and blur. Uh, just because for you guys, you know I love you. We'll try to do something with pop and blur. So in order to do that, I don't even know if I can do it. I'll have to separate my zones. No, it's not going to be really hard to do. I'm not going to do a pop and blur by myself. Listen, you had me do splashes by myself. <laughs> that was nightmarish. We're not going to do that. Okay, but what we will do, because it's a question I get a lot and I definitely want to do is, we're going to shoot a candle. Um, this is actually very, very common um, that people will ask me about this. And I just did uh, a conversation with a friend of mine and great photographer, Paul, on my channel, where he was showing all these shots where they involved candles in them. And I thought, you know what? I get asked that all the time, how to do a candle shot. So let's just do a shot with a candle. I kind of have an idea. Um, <laughs> We're going without a net this time, so, uh, you know, let's see if this works out. All right, so Bob's going to go away. Let's go back here to this guy. All right. All right, here we go. Bob's going back up on the wall. Right above my TV. All right, good. Bob's back. Uh, so I have this thing here, which is basically... A tea, is it the best way to show it? It's like a tea light coal holder, right? So it's got a little owl. And what I thought was, could be interesting, is that the owl, you know, when you put the, the tea light itself, when you put a tea light in it and it's close to a wall or something, what ends up happening is the owl, um, actually like throws a flicker of light through these through these hollow parts in the back. So what I thought could be interesting was to actually use a constant light to create that, right? And then light a candle in there as well. So it's not going to look real per se, it's just going to look kind of cool. At least that's the plan. So that's where we're at with that. Um, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to get my camera set up. I, I think I'm going to shoot kind of down on it to create kind of a graphic. And, oh yeah, that looks pretty cool. So we can do it a few different ways. And I'll kind of just show you guys at first how, how this looks and we'll build up to it. So 
This is basically just the owl like that. I'm turning off all the flashes. I'm going to use the constant light for this, I believe. So according to this, it's kind of looking at it. 15th of a second at F8 will get us that, right? Which is basically the look that I want, right? It's, it's going to have this, uh, it's not exactly what I want, but it's going to give the light through the, uh, through the candle holder. The problem that I have with it is I like the way that the, the owl looks, but I don't like all the light around it. You know, it, to me, it doesn't make as much sense. I kind of want it to feel like the light's uh, just coming through the, I want to focus on it more. So one way I can do that is to focus the head as much as possible and get it in close, right? The closer I put it, the less spilled light I'll have. And I can use the barn doors even to start to create a little bit more yeah, blocked it. A little bit more kind of uh, of a pinched lighting area. It's a little bit, you know? It's not going to make that much of a difference, you know? A little bit. You can see how it's dark in the background now. But this is where, like, specialized tools come in and, and the reason why I like to have them. What I'm going to end up using here is... <laughs> Cosmetic Peach. <laughs> uh... All right, here we go. Uh, I'm going to use the, the projector, right? This thing is, I've used it a bunch of times before. What it, you can use, you can use it for a lot of things, right? We can actually use it to throw patterns. Maybe we'll play around with that too. But what I'm going to use it for is to really just give me a tighter circle of light, right? This is going to make a big difference here when we're trying to light this up to get the smallest circle possible. Um, I think for the purpose of this, oh, that's actually pretty good. Uh, I'm going to come here and I'm going to shoot that for you guys so you can see the difference, right? So now, right, we can see the difference. We're now we're getting something that's going to focus uh, on what we want, right? I can actually focus and defocus the projector a bit, too, to get it exactly where I want it to be. And I can, right, because this is now, right, currently the light is blue, if you will, because it's set in daylight, and we know that's not right for a candle. So let's go as warm as we can put it, which is actually 2,800. Right, so it feels warm, right? Now we're warming it up, right? Oh, that's actually not too bad right out of the box. Okay, so we're going to mess with it a little bit. I think that's pretty nice. Uh, let's see. That's good. I just want to try. I was thinking I might need to use the... the um, the iris. Right? So there's an iris for this. Right? So with the iris, we can actually make an even smaller circle. Hmm. Interesting, because what I'm thinking I want to do is not so much light where the actual candle will be, because that's going to have its own light. And I also don't want it to, to look too much like lights flying everywhere. So let's look at that. Right? Okay, so now, right, this is almost believable that, like, the candle itself could... I mean, anybody who understands light, so everybody watching this knows that that wouldn't be what it would do because if the candle is coming from the bottom of it, right, the candle is coming from the bottom. I'm going to use my pointer. Right? If the candle is coming from down here right, the lights, the, the shape would go up there, right, because that's just how light works. We don't care, right? What we want to do is create something cool. So in order to create something cool, we're going to basically defy what should normally work. And we're going to just do it like this. I think that's actually pretty good. Now, what I will do, just for some extra oomph, is I will turn off the lights in here. Um, okay. 
Uh, let's kill this light too, because it's shining right on me. I gotta put a, there's a moment of truth here. All right, so we don't know exactly how bright the candle is gonna be. So this is now the shot with, with just the light from the projector. What we need to do now is once we get the candle in there, then we have to adjust our exposure for the candle and then we'll use the dimmer on our light to adjust so that everything works out to be bright. All right. I feel like this is the moment where I have to like pause for a second because you don't want to just do this because it could, oh, it's actually kind of cool from this angle too. All right, we might have to take a couple different angles on this. What's kind of fun here is that I may change the angle of the camera. Sorry guys, stand by for a second. I might come a little higher. Because I'm looking at it here. This is why you should always like have a sip of coffee before you do anything. Um, if I come a little bit higher, I'm actually getting a little bit more of the, the owl look and I don't know if it'll show, but the, the, the paper is actually picking up a tiny bit of the light as well. Oh yeah. Yeah, I like that better. Hmm. Now the only downside to this whole thing is that you're not going to get the feet, right? The feet of the, this thing has a little feet on it, um, that we're not going to be able to see. So... That is, it would be nice to have a second light. I don't have a second light though, so I may end up adding in some flash. So we'll see how that's gonna work out. So let me get that ready. Where is that one flash? Here it is. Just because we can, before we do anything else, but because you know how I am, I'm just gonna turn off B and C, turn A on, and I'm just going to put it in TTL, which is gonna look terrible, but I just wanna see what it does. And I'm just gonna fire this flash. It is way over on the other side of the, the room. Um, okay, hold on, it didn't fire. There we go. All right, uh, I'm not, okay, it's at 9.2. I'm actually gonna put it in manual and I'm going to turn it down. Well, we need to, F blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna turn it down two stops. All right, we're just gonna do a test here. Oh, interesting, okay. All right, let me put it in TTL and see what happens. Oh, oh, look at that. Almost nothing. Surprise, surprise. This is good. So what I'm gonna do here is actually turn this over here. Now you guys can't see it, but I'm actually bringing the flash in and I'm just gonna let a little bit of the flash hit this white paper. Okay, that's too much, but that's not, that's not bad. So I'm gonna switch it out of TTL, and I'm gonna go down two stops. Okay, let's see. Okay, no, I'm gonna go back up one stop. Okay, so we're getting this little bit of glow here now, so we can actually see the feet now, right? Okay, I think that's good. I might go a smidge darker. So what I'm doing, I don't, it's probably incredibly hard for you guys to see it. Let me just turn the lights on so you guys can see what's happening here. All right, so. Ah. This, this softbox is literally just kissing the edge right here with the warming gel and it's just barely putting any light in there. Now, it's gotta be way turned up to do that because most of my light's going up past me on the floor. The reason why I don't just put it closer is because it'll seem more obvious. I'm creating like an ambient light source. The other thing I could do too is I could bounce it off the roof. The reason why I'm not doing that is because I don't want uh, any of this light really to go behind and screw up my, uh, my owl in the back. I just want it in the front. So I think that's pretty good. All right, let's light this candle. All right. So. Oh, good, okay. I'm gonna do it without the flash to start with. And the reason why I'm doing it without the flashes is because I want to see the exposure. Oh, actually, that's pretty good. Ha ha, look at you. 
right out of the box, having a good exposure. All right, we add the flash to it, boom. Yeah, there we go, right? Now we're creating a shot where we have the candle light itself is not overexposed. We can actually see it, right? We've got the owl back there throwing its projection and we've got, you know, a little bit of detail on the feet and stuff. And you can play around with this. It really depends on how you want it to look. I could turn the flash up and down. I can make my, my, uh, my data light show more or less. Like for instance, just for the heck of it, now that we've already got that, let's actually open this up a tiny bit more and get a little bit more light. So what I'm doing is I'm opening the data light up more and I'm creating a bit of a more, more of a circle of light behind, which of course is, is completely uh, unrealistic to what the candle will do, but it kind of creates a cool feel, right? So, and we've got the exposure correct. It's all about balancing that exposure. I'm actually gonna bring my flash up a tiny bit more. And by the way, in order to keep everything looking kind of uh, warm, I have, it, I have it set to flash exposure. So that's another thing. If I, if I made my, not flash, but a flash uh, white balance, if I set my white balance to tungsten, right, or incandescent, then it's not going to look good, right? It's going to look like that, which is not what we want. What we want is for it to look warm, because in somebody's mind, when a candle is lighting something, it's warm and smushy. So yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, there it is, candle. Well, that went faster than I thought. Let me do a couple of show tunes while we uh, eat up time. <laughs> uh. Okay, interesting. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can basically, uh, right. So the, the issue with the exposure, the only issue I have with the exposure is that, which is actually a great thing, but in this situation kind of works against me, is that the, uh, the Profoto remote and the Nikon together, when you use them together, it actually uh, switches, as soon as you turn the flash on, it switches out of being able to see the actual exposure you know, because they're assuming you're using a flash, so you're not going to want that. So the only, the only downside to that is usually a great feature to have, but in fact, it can sometimes throw you off because that's why I had to turn it off and back on, if that's what you're wondering. I'm just going to adjust this a little bit more. I went lower on my angle. I definitely like this, uh, this shadow back here, right? And again, it's the projector. You could, yes, people are going to say you could use a snoot and stuff. The issue about using something like a snoot is that the snoot is not going to give you um, the ability to focus it. And that's really what you gain with the reflector, uh, the, with the, the projector, not the reflector. No reflectors in this one. I'm adjusting my position slightly again because I brought this up a tiny bit. Okay, I'm gonna shoot without the flash first because I just wanna see what that looks like, see if I have to make any adjustments. Oh yeah, that's kind of neat. I'm getting a little bit of light on the candle, which I'm not loving particularly, but I think it's okay. Um, also, I think I'm going to change my position slightly. Yeah, I'm going to, just for compositional reasons, I'm gonna, since I have so much of an angle going on here, I'm going to come over to the, I'm going to move my composition a tiny bit, take another shot. Yeah, that's a little more interesting. Um, and I'm going to open up the, the, uh, the iris a bit too, because I'm losing the top of the, the head of the, uh, of the owl. So I'm gonna adjust that slightly. We'll do one more shot like this, and then we'll see if there's any questions and we'll kind of wrap up with anything like that. So that's again with no flash. Oh yeah, there we go. And then just that little bit of flash kicker. You know, that just gives you that little bit. It just basically gives you some light on the thing. To be honest, if I had my, uh, my full set of data lights here, I would not use the flash. I would much rather have another data light because what I would probably do is I would use another projector and I would just light the feet of the thing so I could really get a lot of detail. But I don't have it. So, you know, not everybody has multiple data lights with multiple, <laughs> you know, multiple. Uh, I mean, I don't know why people don't have it, but most, you know, a lot of people don't have that. So, cool. Yeah. So, in the end, right, you can see where we're set up here, 
right? Nice and safe. Don't worry, I have an extra fire extinguisher after this size. Don't fear, fear not. Um, but I am going to put it out now because we're done. Um, and we can see what it does. You know, nice and simple. Just like that, right? Creates a space. You could uh, also do this with, with all flash. If you put a gel on the flash, I suppose. Um, and had a way to, like, like a snoot, like I said, would probably help you. You wouldn't get that nice... Uh, kind of focused projection or out of focus as the case is in this case but you would get uh, you know you could definitely do it so if all you have is flash you can definitely do that I mean just using a bare head won't do it because the light will go everywhere Uh, what do you want to see through the camera? Is that what the conversation is? Uh, I probably could put it through the camera. Let me just see something. Uh, if you want to see through the camera, I think I can do that by going over here, but it will, it will probably have a pretty big delay on it. Yeah, see what you're going to see is that through camera because, like I said, when the flash is, is on, it, it actually doesn't give you a real, the, it gives you like the exposure that you could see. So there you go. That's without it. And of course, uh, I have lights on in the room right now. So if you want to see it through the camera, what it looked like as I was building the shot, that's basically what it looks like. Right now you're looking through the camera um, like that. So now this is basically through the camera. So if, if you are uh, working like this, you can definitely do that. Now, of course, we don't see the, uh, the flash until it goes off clearly. Um, but here, I'll move, the, uh, I'll move the projector around so you guys can see what that looks like. You know, so depending on where you put it, right, I can just bring it down and I'm just getting that edge of it. And if I go down too far, right, then I get all that. And I do love the feet, but I just don't feel like it was, like, if I light the area where the candle was, I don't think the shot was as strong. Like, it looks spotlit here. Whereas this, I think you could actually have an illusion that it's not. So that, that's pretty much why I did it the way I did it. Um, and again, if you had another light like this, you could come across and just light the feet. But, uh, you know, I'm not able to do that with what I have. So hopefully that clarifies that. I'll turn this back on. Cool. All right. I'll call that successful. All right, we, got, we had a goal, right? We had a goal to get two shots. We got them. Let me just quickly look here to see if there's anything somebody wants to see besides a blue background. Um, and we will call it a night, I think. You can definitely compose through live view, sure. I mean, I'm, I'm using, because I'm using a mirrorless camera, um, I mean, not that you couldn't just put it in live view, obviously, on a regular camera, too, on a DSLR. Uh, it's, I mean, I'm just looking at the back of the camera, so I can see it, so I'm just composing like that. I'm not, I'm not actually looking, like, through the eyepiece. It's easy enough to just do it that way. Yeah, you can make different size irises. Again, like I always say, um, use what you got, but at the same time, sticking a piece of board, oh my God, it's getting super windy. I hope you're losing the signal. Sticking a board in front of the thing and throwing a, a light through it is not the same as using a projector. There's reasons why equipment exists. It's not just there because somebody wants to make money from you. I mean, I'm sure they do want to make money from you, but uh, like that's not it. I mean, a projector is a very specific piece of equipment, and if you do product photography, it's super useful. But if you're home now and you're experimenting, you can make your own, you use cinefoil, make yourself a, a snoot out of it, and sure enough, put little things in front of it. You won't be able to control it as well. That'll be the, the main downside to it. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, the other thing too, by the way, like I, I have this, which of course Data Light would, would like you to buy because it's the newest thing. Um, and it's great with the LED. But honestly, if you're looking for a projector and you can get the old tungsten one, like the old tungsten Data Lights and put the, the projector on it, it's super cheap, like less than a grand usually to, to set yourself up with that, which is really good if you want to, if you can actually use it. Uh, okay. Looks like there's an argument in there about how to stream. Uh, okay. Cool. Anything specific about this? 
exposure simulation. Yeah, that's what I just talked about. So yeah, basically, if you if you are using you know a mirrorless camera or you're using a, 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 a non mirrorless camera and you put it in live view, you can definitely see your exposure as you go, and that's basically how I'm judging it. I'm doing that, and I'm also looking at the meter in the camera. I have the meter set center weighted, which is where I usually leave it, and then basically. I mean, at the time, the thing was in the center. So I was actually metering off of the center of where I'm metering. Here, I'll go here. Let's go back here. I'm actually metering uh, off here, you know, to get the correct exposure. And then I'm letting that go wherever it goes. If I metered off of this, then this would be dark because it would try to make it gray, right, instead of bright. And then this would be, uh, you know, the opposite. It would be the whole thing would be too dark. So I'm metering off the thing that I care about. The, essentially, in this case, that brown metallic uh, is the the flesh tone or whatever of the uh, of the 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 scene. Uh, let's see. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, the thing about light it, it, lighting is that the more you do. It, the easier it becomes. So I would say, like, if you are looking to do this kind of stuff, look at, look at how, um, you know, just look at how light works and then kind of go from there because what's going to happen is whatever is natural, you can try to re reproduce. Like, I had this idea because I actually saw it flickering the little owl on the wall and I was like, oh, that's really neat. Um, and I did even think about originally doing it that way, like going low and shooting it up at it. But I thought that it was just cooler to do it this way because I can, right? Uh, the tools help you. Um, but again, you could do it with the flash. Like, just to show you quickly before I leave, because I, I feel like I say things and maybe, like, people do, either don't fully comprehend or they just think I'm just saying it. But if you were to take the flash, like, just a bare head flash like this. Let's say we'll use this guy. And I'm just going to hold it, but... We can take this thing and we can, you know, you can zoom the head. So I'll zoom it as high as it goes. Um, let's go here. Head, B head. All right, so this is B. So I'm turning everything else off besides this one. There we go. If I were to take this and kind of, I'll put the modeling on so I can see it, uh, and I get a similar looking pattern, you know, that's what we're going to get, right? Because the exposure is a little bit off because I have, Put them in manual. Hold on, let me go to TTL. So, you know, this is what... This is what we're going to get, right? The reason why we're going to get this... I'm trying to get an exposure while you're looking at the, my butt. Um, so this is what we get, right? There's nothing wrong with that, but there's a few things going on, right? Part, part of it has to do with the shape of what we're using, right? So if we look at this... And we look at the 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 the, the owl. You, you're not going to be able to control all that going around it, even with the snoot, as much. And look at how sharp it is. Right, this allows you to create that more naturalistic uh, flow. It has to do with the, the 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 way it works, the way it zooms in. So that's one reason why you would use that. I mean, that's basically what you're looking at. Uh, cool. So yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, I'm gonna. I think cut out here since we haven't lost the internet yet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that's good, and we'll call it good. Um, if there's more questions, go ahead and put them in the comments, or if you're watching this after the fact, uh, and I will get back and answer the ones I can. Uh, I appreciate it, and you know everybody at Adorama is, you know, we're trying to put out more and more of this kind of uh, uh, these I don't want to call them contests, uh, challenges for you guys to do stuff. I actually put one out this week. Um, <laughs> shooting right here at this table. So if you haven't seen it yet, uh, check that video out. Uh, it is uh, using basically stuff around the house and I just use a small flash to create kind of interesting lighting patterns. So that's kind of fun. You know, let's all just shoot stuff. If you guys are shooting, uh, make sure that you are tagging Adorama and also hashtagging create no matter what so we can see that stuff. You know, we're very interested. All the hosts, we get together and we talk and we were, we're, we're trying to, to get everybody to do more stuff. So um, keep at it. You know, we'll get through it. Just keep on doing. And uh, yeah, I will see you soon. I am the worst dismount ever. I have no idea. Oh, here we go. Stop and complete. <laughs>